All right, so hi, my name is Kan Wu. Uh, today I'm happy to present our work, Linux Cache for flexible and efficient multi-tenant positive memory caching. This is joint work from my courses from UW Medicine and Microsoft. So memory based, today memory based look aside key value caches are critical for many applications and systems. Like shown here, before accessing data from slow backend storage or compute nodes, applications usually first check some in memory caches like memcached or Redis. So by doing so, we can get better application performance as well as less backend load. In production, a cache server is usually multi-tenant. Several instances, several cache instances may be co-located one cache server for better systematization, easier management, and better scaling. Given this, shared caches may have contention across each other, so it's critical to impose some sharing goals in such setup. For example, in the cloud, cloud providers usually guarantee that a cache will not use more resources than they paid for. There are also other popular sharing policies like quality of service as well, proportional sharing, and so on. Recently, we have seen a rapid development of persistent memory techniques. The Intel Optane DC persistent memory uh, is a great example of such devices. And these devices have emerged as an appealing building block for those in-memory key value caches we just touched. Because PMAM has large capacity, so caching over it will likely have higher head ratio and better application performance. Also, because PMAM is less expensive and costs less energy than DRAM, so it's easier to use uh, to build large-scale cache systems while at low cost. So there has been a lot of interest in developing in-memory key value caches on top of PMAM to us. While PMAM has many advantages, it also introduced important multi-tenancy challenges. First, can we simply not regulate PMM accesses from multiple clients? Unfortunately, the answer is no. The figure here we, we show presents the single thread 256 bytes PMM read throughput. First, we show the number. One, there's no other traffic going to the same device. Then, we also show the throughput. One, there's a small amount of map, uh, traffic added to the same device. What we can see is even a small amount of PMAM traffic can now significantly impact the co-located workloads. So we must regulate those PMAM accesses from different clients. Furthermore, due to PMAM's special characteristics, existing DRAM or storage regulation mechanism may become ineffective on PMAM today. We will use the cloud resource limiting approach again we, we discussed earlier as one example. We evaluated, all, we evaluated here how limiting a client's memory bandwidth, like usually done in the DRAM system, can now limit that client's influence to other clients on PMAM now. We use two caches here, A and B, and with cache B having a PMAM bandwidth limit of one gigabyte per second. In this figure, we plot cache A's tail latency over time, with B initially inserting some popular 256 bytes popular items, and thus generating PMAM, uh, 256 bytes PMAM writes. And then, at some point, we change cache B to generate 64 bytes PMAM writes. As shown here, even though we effectively limit B's throughput at all times, the interference effect from cache B to A varies a lot with B's workloads. And the interference effect is significant when the access size is very small. The reason is today's PMAM only supports efficient internal 256 bytes access granularity. And hence, all 64 bytes cache line miss or PMAM access will be amplified within the device, causing more interference than what may expect according to their bandwidth usage. This kind of special PMAM characteristic makes existing memory bandwidth limiting mechanism ineffective on PMAM today. Based on these findings, we aim to, in this work, 
design new mechanism for PMM sharing. To achieve this goal, we first asked, what mechanism should we focus on? This is actually a difficult question to answer because there are so many different sharing goals given different you know, setups. In the cloud, for example, as we just mentioned, results limiting based on how much you paid is a very popular sharing policy. And then in company-managed cash clusters, quality service is another popular policy for both high performance and high system utilization. In this configuration, there are typically latency critical clients with some performance guarantees and best effort clients with no performance guarantees at all. Finally, in more cooperative setting, proportional sharing according to some client's weights and fail slowdowns are also some frequently used uh, policies. How should we handle all these different sharing options? Our solution is to concentrate on the subtreat or basic mechanism for all these different policies. Studying these popular sharing policies helped us to summarize four critical basic sharing mechanisms. For example, all of the policies we just introduced must control the rate at which a client can access PMA. We refer to this control as request regulation mechanism here. And then for policies like result limiting, right, you not only need the control, but also information about how much resource, PMA resource a client has used. You need this information, right? And resource usage counting is hence required. Finally, because sharing can cause contention, some cross-client interference analysis is also necessary. According to our summary, there are two major type of information required. First, given a client, we want to know how much it has been slowed down due to sharing resources. And second, given a client, we want to figure out who is interfering with it. We, re we refer to these two different types of information as slowdown estimation and the interference analysis. These mechanisms are designed by policies like quality of service and fail slowdowns. Now, after we know what are important mechanisms, we make several important contributions in this work. In this work. First, we study this mechanism and their problems on today's PMM device. Then we design a new those new PMM sharing mechanism in our system called NixCache. NixCache covers all these four mechanisms we discussed, and the new mechanism can allow any new policy to any existing or new policy to be implemented based on them. And in this work, we were able to revise all these four popular sharing policies we just mentioned. In the following, we will look one case study of the interface analysis mechanism and the related quality service policy. Here, we demonstrate the use of interference analysis mechanism in the quality of service policy setup. Like we introduced earlier, there are latency query clients and best effort clients sharing the system. So in this system, whenever a latency query client performance target is not met, what we'll do is to save this latency query client, we must throttle some best effort clients. And the interference and ana analysis mechanism here is used to answer who should we throttle. We can conduct interference analysis to find out who is causing the most interference to this latency critical client we really care. And then we can just throttle this. By doing this, we can quickly save the latency critical clients as well as achieve high system utilization. So DRAM interference analysis was straightforward. Priorworks usually use uh, each client's bandwidth as indicator. It assumes clients with high ban memory bandwidth will cause more interference. Bandwidth as indicator, however, does not work on today's PMAM devices. For example, writes can cause much more interference than reads in PMAM, even with the same bandwidth. In the figure here, we show the tail latency of a victim read client with varying amounts of interference traffic or the traffic co-located with it 
as shown in the x-axis. We plot both cases when the interference traffic is reads and when the interference traffic is writes. As we can see, why, why writes cause far more interference than reads in PMAM, and bandwidth now is not a reliable indicator of interference. In the paper, we also discussed additional issues. For example, inefficient small accesses more than 256 bytes can cause more interference than efficient accesses with the same bandwidth. Please find more details in the paper. Overall, now we need a high fidelity interface analysis mechanism for PMAM sharing. Next, we introduce how Nix Cache provides high fidelity interface analysis, you know, even facing the complex characteristic of today's PMAP devices. The goal is to answer who is interfering the client the most with a given client. Meanwhile, to be immediately useful with current devices, we aim to propose pure software mechanism with no special hardware assumptions. Furthermore, because PMAM devices are still in uh, development, you may see more new generation uh, devices in the future, so we make no assumptions about their future characteristics. We treat them as black box. NixCache achieves this goal through an idea of runtime microcontrol experiments. Consider a system with three caches, A, B, and C. In addition, we are interested in interface analysis for cache A. Currently, A has the latency of capital L, and the balloons here represent the pressure or interference of each cache put on each other. What next cache do is it will first throttle B by a certain amount, and then measure the, the effect on cache A as uh, delta L1. Then when we guess, when we figure out that now Nix will repeat the experiment, but with cache C throttled this time. And the throttle amount is the same across the two experiments shown here. Now to answer the question, who is generating more interference to A, B or C? It is straightforward to answer. We just need to compare the delta L1 and delta L2 the larger change indicates larger interference before. To demonstrate how much we can benefit from this new mechanism, we show it again in the setup of the quality service policy, but a more concrete one. Now, A is the latent group cache and B, C are the best ever caches. We set B as read dominant and C as write dominant. We fix cache A, B workloads over time. In the following group of results, we demonstrate how Nix Cache can ensure both quality of service and achieve high system utilization. Here, in the top figure, we plot the latent critical cache tail latency over time, and the red line indicates the latent target we must meet, and in the bottom figure, we plot best effort cache throughput over time. Initially, cache B has reader traffic around 2 gigabyte per second, while cache C is very light. Then we change cache C to generate bursty writes at 13 seconds. And this is when we notice that latent query cache is failing as latent target. Following the violation, DRAM based solution, as shown in the bottom figure, will iteratively throttle the best effort caches with higher bandwidth. As shown, the latent query cache is then protected. However, the problem is the innocent cache B is incorrectly penalized. Although latent critical cache performance drops are caused by bursty writes in cache C, cache B now ends in around zero throughput. That's pretty sad. In contrast, Nix cache, as shown in the right bottom figure right now, can find out that cache C is a real interference house through micro-experimenting we just introduced, and only cache C, you can see, and only cache C is throttled. With Nix cache, cache B performance and system utilization are increased by more than six times. This shows the benefits of Nix interface analysis mechanism. Finally, a quick summary. In this work, we identified the need for evolving system software or hardware stack 
for PMAP sharing. We contribute to, new, to this new area by first define what are important basic mechanisms we should focus on and analyze existing measures problems on today's PMAP device. Then in NixCache, we provided new mechanism designs and new policy implementations. This talk covered interference analysis quality policy and QoS policy. You may find more interesting results such as how NixCache can limit actual PMAP resource usage, ending in up to five times better performance isolation, and how Nix can provide two times better fairness in terms of slowdown, as well as how Nix supports interference well idle results donation in proportional sharing, those results in the paper. We also hope this work could inspire uh, future hardware redesigns and or hardware software co-designs for PMAP sharing. Finally, thanks for listening and please feel free to any, ask any questions.